Welcome to the latest edition of the Black Jack Pack. You know that the Aces are back. It's your host, the Rated R himself, Ryan. You know what it is. I'm here with my fellow host, Rudy, the Playmaker, as well as Parks. How are y'all guys doing? I don't care about you. Uh, it's, a, it's a good Monday, <laughs> you know. The Mondays are always the same. They, they, mm-hmm. they come, they come fast. They come early, and they leave. You, they leave you depleted. So that's how I'm feeling. <laughs> <laughs> now, you know, one thing about Mondays is that there's nothing worse because I had this today when you're at work and you're in a meeting and they don't want to cut the meeting when it's like time to go. It's like it's five. It's certain, five p.m. I started at certain, nine. Due to certain my contractual, due to certain contractual agreements, I cannot speak on if this is right or wrong in my current employment status. Therefore, I will be quiet. No, oh but. me! <laughs> After the allotted time of any meeting, I'm gonna tell you straight, straight up. I don't talk. <laughs> All right, I, we'll I'm get mentally to that. disengaged. We will get. To <laughs> I ain't in the meeting anymore. I know you're not in the meeting. You're barely checking to anything. You don't even check into our group chat most of the time. But speaking of that, we've got a lot of things to talk about today. And the first thing that we're going to talk about very quickly is the NBA season. It is coming back on July 31st, and there is nobody more excited than basketball fans. We know that in the previous episode, we talked about our predictions. But, oh, oh Lord, our predictions took a fat hit with all, of the, people being di- all the people being diagnosed with COVID-19 in the NBA, including Nikola Jokic. Um, I don't know why I was about to say De'Aaron Fox. It's not like he's going to play as the Sacramento <laughs> Kings. But, wow. but, guys, guys, who do you guys think is going to win, is going to the NBA Finals this year? Lakers, Raptors. Now, I want to ask this question, guys. Do you think this is going to be the hardest championship to win or the easiest championship to win? I I stand by saying, you know, it's, it's the easiest uh, for the Lakers probably. Uh, no, no, but that. overall, for me, I think this championship is the hardest. If teams had health, if everybody was healthy and everybody doesn't get COVID, we have full strength teams. I still see it as the easiest. Everybody has, everybody has the rest. Everybody has has everything. There's no excuses. No, no you're talking. No, you're talking about rest. But what about cohesion, chemistry, time together? They don't have that. Anymore. I think three I months think... without people is a long time. Mm-hmm. It is a long time. It is a long time. And for certain people, like Giannis gave the perfect example. Like he lives in a condo. He doesn't have access to a to a gym. That is right. true. And by the way, all apologies to De'Aaron Fox. But. Um, he does not have <laughs> yeah, COVID. Not I'm sorry. There was another Sacramento Kings <laughs> player, I think, that got COVID. Uh, and by the way, we sent all our heartfelt um, thoughts and feelings to them. I think it might just be one of the hardest, depending on your schedule. Because there are teams, because it's not like everybody has the same schedule and facing off against all the same teams. Certain teams have inherently very difficult schedules. Like the, the Raptors, Raptors, being one. The Raptors are, have, have the arguably toughest schedule. They're facing like out of the eight teams I have to face, I have to face six or seven over 500 teams, all right? Yeah, yeah that's what's up. Then you have the Los Angeles Lakers, who have an absolute cakewalk, and so do the New Orleans Pelicans. Which is... Well, you're ta- yeah, but annoying. you're talking about... But you, everybody knows those games don't really matter. They matter for the seeding within, the play- in, within this new playoff format. That's where it counts. And then you have to face... Because think about it. You give the Lakers a team like I don't know the Pelicans, or you give the or give the Raptors a team like the Heat, is is two completely different playoff series, my friend. Yeah, but I, my thing is this: give the Raptors Atlanta. No, Ryan, you're talking Stop about, it. but you're not talking about the actual teams they're facing. I'm talking about everything else that could stop you from winning a championship, mm-hmm. right? Like. Even think about like there are people or people support people that they won't be able to be in contact with, mm-hmm. right? They won't be able to be in contact with their family. They won't be able like there's so many things in the bubble that matter, right? And because of COVID, so for me that's what I'm saying. This is the hardest championship out of every championship ever it's to have. Because if you win this, you can win in any condition. Because mm-hmm. there's no ch- there's no fans. Right, because you can't even. Oh, so home court advantage is gone. There's no point to it. 
which I feel helps the Clippers because um, I felt like they were sabotaged by the how that whole uh, fans thing. Even in home games that they had against the Lakers, it just didn't feel like, like it was not it was a, it was an away game. Um, yes. But yeah, by the way, um, journalistic integrity we gotta call it. It's actually Buddy Hill, Jabari Parker, and Alex Len from the Sacramento Kings, and we send our heartfelt thoughts to them. I just needed to make sure that I got that fact correctly. However, um, I think it's even slightly easier depending on the type of cohesion you had before going into it if you guys were actually friends and brothers that hung out together and all that and that even keep together via group chat zoom calls and stuff of the genre this is like going back to war with you this is like going back to battle with your friends like going back to work with anybody you know in that sense the only difference is you have millions upon millions of fans watching you go to work and that have nothing else to do with their lives. No, no, right. But that's but the thing is, people who play sports, if you're playing a team sport, timing matters for when you mm-hmm. run a play. Yeah. Chemistry but I do, matters. I do know that there are people that will lose significant time. Like Gordon Herod has already said he's going to he's going to leave the bubble for the birth of his son. And that's totally understandable. Some people are going to leave the bubble. And the mental health effects that the bubble will have. You, as you said, you know, not seeing family and stuff of the genre. Kevin Love, DeMar DeRozan are both people that are very outspoken on mental health. So I really want to see what's, what are the procedures that the NBA are going to take for that mental health. That's yeah, but how long, how long will it be, factor. though? Isn't I, it just a month or it's not max? No, they said in until- Max, like two months. Max I two think. months. But still two months away from your loved ones, that's a lot. I think I'm making it more of a big deal than two months. Years. It's still going to do a lot. Yeah, but I've been doing it for way longer than two months right now. You know, I know some people who've been in (laughs) relationships and didn't see their significant others for over six months. It is doable. It sucks, but it is absolutely doable. But everybody, leave your comments in the comment section below. Do you think that the NBA season, the NBA championship, will be harder to get this year, or will it be easier? Leave your comments down below. Like, share, and subscribe this video. And it's time to get to our next topic. And our next topic is a lot darker because this is what I like to call the Florida report, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, Florida, Florida, Florida. Um, who wants to guess how many cases Florida got in COVID-19 this week, today, as of speaking? I can't tell you. Honestly, Florida. Ladies and gentlemen, on July 4th, Oh my goodness. Uh, over 11,000. Texas. Nice. Texas got 7,890. Florida, over 11,000. I can't even tell you guys what I feel about Florida. Because every time I hear stuff about Florida, I just quit. I absolutely do. Because I'm just like, these people aren't trying to feel safe. They're not trying to be safe anymore. And this is where you want to put the bubble, right? This is where they want to put the NBA bubble. So, this, this my whole thing about place. my whole thing about it. I mean, there's a lot of things besides the virus. I know some people know about the uh, the bacteria that's around that could uh, take take control or um, eat away at your brain a lot more quicker than Alzheimer's. That's not been uh, been cited, but uh, in in everything that's going on with the U.S., right? Like it's gotten to a point where the coronavirus is not the primary objective, their primary objective is staying economically sound and uh, they're taking a hit for it. And um, there's been a lot of, a lot of talk just of what this president is trying to do and what the governors are trying to do in regards to the virus. And it's obvious that there's no self-regard for the quarantine measures, especially for American citizens. They're acting radical. It's at this point, it's just about economic downplaying and it's just about having fun and living life and, the, well, I'm gonna tell the you one thing that makes America. Cause did you did you see that video from Atlanta? The party they're having. Yeah, that was that was too much for me. No, but that's what I'm saying. I'm I think, on a casket. <laughs> okay. Actually, let's. <laughs> we should we talk sidebar. About it? We sidebar to that. <laughs> we no. We need to. We need to address this. As 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 Listen. black as black people. Not what are we as doing? Black, as people. As what are my we doing? brothers. What are we if doing? I die. <laughs> what are we doing? I'm in the casket. <laughs> you bring me to a strip joint? 
Whoa. What are you doing? Like, this is one of the most embarrassing I things I think I've ever seen no, on social I, media. And listen, I was like, I was just like, I can't. Person requested that? Don't do that. Don't even think about it. I, I, I watched that video and said, I need so much more context. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I even if they do request it, do you really think that's what he wants? Man, like I, I swear, there's, there's a time and a place for everything. No, but there the truly th- is. But but the professional dancer, I mean, the dancer that she that danced on the casket, I, whew, I that was ballsy, you. guys. <laughs> like I don't know, about and I'm not you, even saying that. But this is I'm crazy. saying that just in the matter of like, oh, what is. Not even on a moral or or sense, just like just is dangerous. Like <laughs> like you're you're in those big heels and a casket is not really made to be, you know, walked you, upon. Like, the- no. <laughs> but whoever Your made that casket, that, no? whoever ne- made that, that casket made a and very sturdy casket. Listen, somebody said my there's even a thing that my son, I'm like, my son? Like if I, listen, if no. my son had requested this, I I would think. Tw- listen, I'm thinking twice about if that child, my son. Okay. Now, At least respect me, not to force me to go to a strip joint when you <laughs> die. <laughs> Sidebar <laughs> over. I mean, let's get back to the medium of conversation what we're talking about, guys. I'm not the saying. Parties in the States, I truly feel like the thing that makes America great, no pun intended, is the fact that everybody is allowed to be free and individualistic. And everybody's allowed to be an idiot. And some that and leads to a certain that level pun of was extremism. And no, it actually wasn't. It would just be thought of my No, nah, I was talking process. about Rudy's pun. Rudy's pun oh, was intended. Rudy's pun was definitely intended. <laughs> but like But listen, as a fellow American, like I, I like you know this is part of our but part of our identity is to uh, you know go against the status quo. It's just that you know what's sad about this whole status quo is that it's it's just bringing out the amount of stupidity that exists. No, the status in quo, such states. The status quo is made to protect you. So the reason why the status quo exists, you guys don't like to follow the status quo, and oh. now this is why people have been telling me people have been telling me all over Twitter and Facebook and all that. This is the end of the American empire. We're watching it live from the comfort of our homes, beds, and couches. Because, look, I'm looking at the presidential election right now. We have Trump, Biden, and Kanye West. And strangely enough, Kanye is not the least serious of all participants. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> if Kanye is one of the most level-headed participants in your election, there is an inherent problem with the American system. Kanye is running for president. This is not a joke, ladies and gentlemen. Listen, he's prefer- over thirty-five and has over well. Chances are his wife has over millions and millions of dollars, so she can definitely fund his entire campaign. Listen, what I will say is this. I don't think it's the end of the American empire. Not because I truly all believe in America in that way. It's just that uh, people tend to overgeneralize or over um, sensationalize what's going on. There have been, unfortunately, much worse presidents and presidential camp people. Like, there are people that have been president. If they really tell you what Zachary they, what Taylor, did? Jimmy you Carter. Really, Don't even get me started on Jimmy Carter, bro. Bill what, what, what are we doing? There's hey. a lot. There's what a lot of bad. Doing? There's a lot of bad. Okay? What are we doing? No, no, no. I, I, I mean, I always tell this. Okay. I always evaluate presidents. Oh, I don't evaluate God. presidents in terms of morality. I evaluate presidents in ter- in terms of them doing their job. I like look at the oath they take. And look at the functions of a president. And then you will understand what the job of the president is to do. And to and also who elects the president. The electoral co- co- Think about it. It's the electoral college that elects the president. They swear an oath to the Constitution of the United States. And 
uh, when you're president, they are part of the executive, the, the executive branch of government. Branch. So they are beholden to the legislative branch and what they what they do. They're the people that he has to find a plan to execute somebody else's ideas. So, so what are you guys even complaining about? I've always said this when people talk about presidents and uh, prime ministers. I'm like, listen, do you know the roles and functions? Then we can have this conversation. If not, then our entire dialogue is just you're talking about morality and stuff. And then it's like, well, listen, the people you should be complaining about are the people in the legislative branch. No, no I, I do complain. Take the side. I'll just take the sidebar um, away from you here. Um, in terms of the discussion of America's fall, I, this is in no way in my eyes I can see it for physical future. In fact, this may be America's rise. And the reason why I say this is because what people are not understanding is that there's an economic battle that's been going on for the last four or five years, and we are at the peak of this World War III pandemic. Uh, not just a pandemic, but a war in itself. We are literally witnessing, in all truth of it, the idea that we could blame someone for this virus and take control of their economics who have been on the rise for the last three years. China is gonna be blamed, not just from the American people, but from the European Union, from Russia, from everybody. And somebody's gonna have to pay for the economic turmoil that's been, that's been existing. The, the, the Huawei up to the whole Baltic, the whole uh, China Sea, all these issues have been boiling up to this point where this is, this is the heightened or the, the most heightened we've seen. And if we're talking just straight politics, this is America's greatest chance to one, weaken uh, China's rise, and two, gain a foothold back into politics and let everybody know you tried. But you failed. Because the thing is, is I mean, because you you know I like I like following game theory, and I said the problem of, the problem is that um, they're playing an infinite game with people that aren't playing with the same risks, and they're not playing it. Okay, the best way to explain this very quick, very quickly to very everybody, quick. and the example is very simple. If you put when there was the Cold War, it was very clear. U.S., Soviet Union, economically, militaristically, proxy war, proxy war. Like, you could see, you could check off all the boxes, right? Mm -hmm. the, the thing is, since then, and in the heads of Americans, oh, we won. No, you didn't really win. You just survived. The Soviets bowed out. Well, Gorbachev was infiltrated by um, spies in the CIA network, and obviously, yep. what happened to the British spies there in nineteen no, not, not even yeah nineteen eighty eighty four after Reagan had partnered with MI six for that for that you know that over that covert operation in with uh, with Ecuador and the but, guy who but, was down there then you know but but happened. we can have this discussion for a long time but like I'm, that's what I'm, I'm saying they won they won but, by by an implosion, you know. Yeah, it was it was more it was actually Chernobyl actually is what really destroyed it, right? Because right, right, that's right. when they realized how much they were already broken. But that's part of the Soviet Union. Now, right. and the worst part is the Soviet Union. Huh? I'm saying the Soviet Union could have won. And I'm, I'm not a communist. I'm not somebody who says you know who's pro USSR. I'm saying. They had a twenty-eight to three lead. No, and blew it. No, I don't think they were twenty-eight. They were not. No, they here's were why. Listen, the Cuban Missile Crisis. Play, is crazy. play. Listen, think about it. Between nineteen fifty and nineteen ninety, yeah. Okay, they had the chance to amass the the biggest nuclear arsenal in the world. They were stationed in Cuba. They were taking over a little bit of everywhere. Korea, uh, the war in Korea, they, let's be honest, they, frankly, won. Vietnam, they, they won. won yeah. They were winning. They were getting flat W's. After they except lost. Except in Africa, nobody except, said that. Except in Africa. They lost in Africa. That's because everybody lost control of Africa. That's because mm -hmm. the great Oxid Orient you know, powers lost power in Africa. But that doesn't mean that the Americans fully won until around the 70s. Until so after we agreed Vietnam. that the space after war the we agreed that the space war played a pivotal, pivotal match. No, no, but you're... The but, states are winning. What about the, the states won when they realized, or at least 
calmed down their own internal struggles and were like, there's a bigger enemy that we need to face. That's when the Cold War took a shift, in my opinion. After the Vietnam War. Yeah. When they're okay. just like, you know what? You. Guys, okay, let's let's stop being petty. No, because the to, thing let's is let's get to action. So the that's what I'm saying. They had a twenty eight to three lead and blew it. And no, them, but, blew up. But, but okay. I understand your point, Ryan. Right? There was a lot of internal strife, civil rights movement, all, Vietnam War, all of these things were happening. In the start of the AIDS crisis, the start of the things happening, and the crack crisis. God damn. Dude, Escobar, and then you go into Gorbachev resigning, and then all of a sudden Soviet Union is... Burning. No, no, but no, no, those are all valid points. But my thing is, the USSR's problems, a lot of them were self-inflicted, right? And the thing is, I've always said this. I was like, um, the happiness, the strength of a nation is all is best representative by the lowest people on the totem pole. Mm. The thing about America and what makes America great or the ideal of America great is that every person in America believes that they can make it. Whether or not they can, they can is different, but they believe that they can. So that belief and that hope in the land of opportunity will always have them trending upwards. Like I even say all the time, the reason why I even said, the only reason why the stock market works the way it works, especially in America, is because people always think they're gonna make more money. I understand, I truly do understand. No, no, no. But I'm gonna ask, but that, you, no, no, but I'm gonna ask you if you've read when two you, books. But, I'm gonna ask you if you've read two books. Oh, shit. Ryan, Ryan, have you ever Ryan. read The no Great Gatsby? But, can, I didn't even finish my point from originally. <laughs> like one thing at a time. You're, you gonna ask you. You got the manifesto. <laughs> you gonna ask me read Hitler's book? No, but then oh, and then the thing about communism and the way they have structured communism in Russia, they had they had turned, the they had made the government against the, its own people. Even though United the United States does do that, but the the thing is, it, I always say the United States is always fighting against the United States. I just want to make that point clear, Rudy. I'm sorry. I, I can't stand by and let that point creep. The U.S. Constitution bill is built that the people itself can overthrow the government at any time if they deem that their liberties are being stripped from them. This is actually in the Constitution. Saying. So I just want to clarify that. No, no, but, but that's what I'm more. saying. It's okay. ingrained that. that you're allowed to revolt. You're allowed to revolt. To yeah, revolt. That, that's the key because that was the difference between the king. Now I want to make one more thing. The Soviet Union was taught that everybody is in a collective the problem with that collective is that you have when you have people infiltrating your network and telling you that there's a better way. It's kind of like a salesman, or it's kind of like somebody who's a, who's an enemy, yeah. but you let them into your house. When you had those people do that, that's why these spies from MI6 and CIA were so good at turning everybody against each other in the Soviet Union because they were living in this collective and everything was good. And then all of a sudden, with the missile crisis, nobody knows which way to turn. They feel like life could have been so much better they, if they kind of dipped into the democratic, uh, capitalistic side, and it all fails. Mm -hmm. So that, that's no, that's okay. kind of my take on it. No, so, no, and I get that because guys are so good. Now you've actually said my point for me. So what? Now it'll come back to this point. The U.S. The problem with the U.S. is that they started put. They uh, continued playing game theory or tried to beat other entities that weren't like the Soviet Union. Like when they're fighting the Soviet Union, it was direct. You're not fighting against. Terrorism, like already a fight against terrorism is difficult because you're you're fighting you're not fighting man to man you're fighting man to ideals. Yeah, that's true. right. Then at the same time you're also fight you're also fighting economic battle with China. Right, right. Then at the same time within your own country you're having your own issues. Right, right. right? Then like if you really and I even said the problem with America is, and I even said in order to win or be successful at anything. You have to have cognitive, you can't have cognitive dissonance. Your morals, values, and actions need to coincide. The problem is that anytime the actions, morals, and values of America don't coincide, there is crisis. Because the United States, unlike most countries in the world, were actually built on very specific ideals, values, and morals. And which led to the actions of the founding fathers 
yes, I know, and right now with the whole slavery thing and seeing Black Lives Matter, that's the whole point. I think that's a good Black way Lives to, Matter. To, to answer the question. I think um, with Ryan, um, maybe you wanted to segue over to the next one. Yeah, and the best segue is now that we're talking about the Founding Fathers. And uh, by the way, what are your thoughts? Is this the end of the American empire? Yes, no, leave your comments down below. And hopefully in the next episode, we'll, or we'll have a special episode where we'll just talk about the comments down below. Hopefully, who knows, in the future we will see. We have a whole but, history like Definitely. But my million dollar question for you guys, now that we're talking about the founding fathers, is what do you guys think about Native American relations? Because they have horrible Native American relations. But today, our relations are slowly getting better. Huh? And sports, and I said slowly. In Canada. When, you, when Canada, you're talking to Rudy, you're talking to me. And when you're talking to Rudy, you're talking to me at the same time. We're both going to look at you like, what are you saying? In Canada, is getting better. Better. The, solution, the truth and reconciliation. It's a stolen land. Truth and reconciliation. Listen. At least the Canadian government is attempting. And that means our private. Attempting? It's stolen land. Parth, Parth. I've always said this. My problem is that people that live in another area stole people that from another land to bring them to work on a stolen land. Think about that dynamic. It is truly a dynamic. You have pissed off but I'm asking two separate groups of people. I'm asking you guys, Frank. Rubbing my head because it's it's. What do you guys? I know. I know. I'm trying to be positive. I'm trying to be an optimist. <laughs> I am absolutely trying. Black but, but Lives that, Matter no, that, has right. pushed. Listen, mm, you yeah, gotta listen. introduce this. Black Lives Matter has introduced a wider conversation for everybody of every race. And people are claiming, okay, you know what? We're gonna be fair. Let's be absolutely fair. The Washington Redskins, the Cleveland Indians. Two private organizations are opening the idea of changing their team names in order to better reflect the times and to stop the stereotyping and the offensive names. What are your thoughts, guys, quickly on this subject? Because I am totally for them changing their names. Rudy, you got to go first, man. This is a big one to unpack. Make it quick. This is even big to unpack. They should have done this years ago. There are no, like, we, we don't call, uh, Major League Baseball doesn't have uh, the N League anymore. Mm-hmm. Like, think about that. But we're, you're still continue to have the Washington, and you're still going to continue to have the Cleveland, come on. Yeah. You guys both know the team that I'm referring to. Personally, I don't root for those teams. I've never really talked about them, but they that's one of the suck. reasons why. They're both and the thing is, teams and they're they horrible they, Cleveland was in the World Series in 2016. I beat them, but you well, know what's you know crazy? <laughs> but, bro, you know what's crazy? I've even said, this is like the, the, the this is starting to become like a, the tide that the Black Lives Matter movement is really pushing. Because think about how many years and how many petitions, how many times the same family has been petitioned to change the name of the Washington Redskins. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Think about that. And it's not even like a new name. Like, no, it's been at least 40 years or 30 years people have been complaining about this. If and only know, now is a problem. And I know that, I don't even think it's now that it's been a problem. But I also think that now that the discussion is there, people are finally going to change it. The Washington Redskins have been owned by an owner who doesn't want to change. He didn't want to change for a long, long time. Daniel Snyder did not want to change. And just to, oh, yes. Um, oh, Lord, just breaking news. Well, actually, it's breaking news for us, not breaking news for you who are watching this. Donald Trump said they name they named teams out of strength, not weakness. But now the Washington Redskins and Cleveland Indians, two fabled sports franchises, Table than what I don't understand look like they're going to be changing their names in order to be politically correct. Indians like Elizabeth Warren must be very angry right now. <laughs> oh, you know what? 
Okay, so I'm just going to give my take on it. Um, in terms of name changes, um, I know a lot of people may have different opinions, so I'll start with the other side. I get that it's you've grown, you've grown up with these names and that um, these names have a certain value to it. You know, you show up to your sports games. You know, you like having the idea, the idea of dressing up and things like that and showing your support. I do think that given where the times are at, things do need to change. And it doesn't, it doesn't change much to change the name. We can come up with something cool. I'm sure the fans will have an input if, if done right. I don't know about Dan Snyder. Dan Snyder's a bum. I'm just going to call it how it is. But, um, you know, mm-hmm. for other teams like that, you know, straight up, we, we could have a discussion and, and come up with some really cool names. Um, given I've the, the... I've heard the Red Tails. Red Tails are based on uh, fighter pilots in World War II. Red hey, Tails. those guys were legends. They're legends. That's a great name for a football team. Shoot, bring back the Cleveland Spiders. I'm down with the Cleveland Spiders. Maybe LeBron might go to their games and support them. Maybe. Who knows? At the the same time, can we change the name for the Browns? What's wrong with the Browns? Mm. No, there's already too much. (laughs) 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 No, here's the thing. No, there's a difference here in what you're asking for, Rudy. What we're dealing with is the fact that the Washington Redskins and the Indians did cultural appropriation. The Cleveland Browns just have a culture of being putrid. (laughs) <laughs> There's two <laughs> different debates here. Two completely different Ryan, debates. And no, one no, no, of them no. is more no, no, important Ryan, right now. Ryan, no, no, Ryan. What we're trying to do is eliminate uh, offensive culture, okay? And the and the and I, and I'm making light of this, but I know this is a very serious topic. But the Cleveland Indians, the Washington Redskins, please are offensive. change their names and should please. change their names, and the Browns should just change. Change. Well, thank like, you. Yeah, that's... Ruin Odell Beckham's career. Whose oh. fa- whose fault is it? Is it that Odell can't catch the ball, or the other dude can't throw the can't throw the ball? <laughs> no, 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 no. Listen, okay. <laughs> he had Eli Manning throwing him the ball. You know for a fact that boy can't throw. Okay. Thank you. That's all the time that we have today. Like, share, and subscribe. This is the latest episode of the Black Jack Pack. We've got Parse Retro. We've got the Playmaker as our host today. Thank you guys for joining us. You know, we'll be back when the Aces are back. You know that's us. Again, like, share, and subscribe to all your friends, family, coworkers, dogs, cats, pet fish. I don't really know. But just let the world know that the Aces are back. We'll be back sooner than you think. Talk to you guys later.